Dear viewers, welcome to the sixth webinar of our webinar series, Essay Contest Winners Forum, facilitated by the Goy Peace Foundation. My name is Patrick Petit. I'm a Goy Peace Foundation staff member based in Munich, Germany. I'm in charge of co-producing this webinar series, Essay Contest Winners Forum, and I have the great pleasure to moderate today's webinar. Today's webinar addresses the theme, the concept of family, in today's postmodern society. In that respect, we have the great honor and privilege for having among us two distinguished previous first prize essay contest winners who will be our panelists on this webinar. Namely, Angelina Shliakova from the Russian Federation. Hello. Hello, Hello Angelina. You're welcome to that webinar today. Thanks. Thank you for joining. And our second panelist is Narayan Kulkarni from the United States of America, living in Florida. Welcome, Narayan, to that webinar. Hello, Patrick. Hello, Angelina. Hello, viewers. It's great to be here. Thank you. You're welcome. As long as we can think in this history of humanity, human individuals have always been members of clan, or of family, and have played various roles in that social setting. So my first question I'm asking is to you, Angelina, what does family mean to you? Angelina? Yes, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, Patrick. Uh, first of all, I would like to say thanks to the Goy Peace Foundation and personal to Patrick to, for inviting me to take part in the webinar. Uh, I hope that we will have a fruitful time today. So as for me, my name is Angelina uh, and I'm from Russia. Uh, I'm the first prize winner of the International Essay Contest, as Patrick has already mentioned. Uh, now I study at the law faculty of the Lomonosov Moscow State University in Russia. And the topic of the webinar is the concept of family in today's postmodern society is very familiar to me because uh, I'm specialized in family and children law. Uh, and I study family models and children rights in different states all over the world and try to find the best variant of children and parents living. So as for the first question, my family means much to me. Uh, firstly, it's the only place where I'm always supported and loved. Secondly, all members of my family share the same interests and hobbies, therefore we enjoy spending time together. Thirdly, for, my family is a real, uh, for me, my family is a real example of how the relations between parents and people and children should be organized. I think that family should be the main value of a person's life, as it's a unique organism which cannot survive without trust and love. I was born in Vladimir, an ancient Russian city, uh, which used to be the capital of ancient Russia. Uh, till 17 years, I lived there, but after entering the university, I had to move to Moscow to study here. I missed my family a lot. However, Vladimir is not far from Moscow, just 180 kilometers. Uh, I couldn't visit my family very often. Uh, but fortunately, this year my family moved to Moscow and now we all are together again. So I really appreciate my parents' position and I'm very proud of my family. Thank you. And and you, you got married uh, recently, is that correct? Yeah, uh, oh, it's true. Just on the, 20, oh. on the 31st of August. So how is how is the feeling of being married? Yes. Uh, yeah, I'm very happy because it was one of my uh, main dreams. <laughs> so it's come, it's came true, and I'm really very happy. Thank you, Patrick. Yeah, beautiful. So a dream, not a dream come true. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you. And uh, you, Narayan, Narayan, what is uh, what means family to you, Narayan? So. First of all, thank you, Patrick, um, for the invitation. Thank you, Angelina, also for being here. Congratulations to you. Um, for our viewers, my name is Narayan Kulkarni. I won the youth category of the essay contest in 2015. I currently study in the Master of Health Administration program at the College of Public Health in the University of South Florida in Tampa, Florida. Um, family is something that is very dear to me and the meaning of family has changed for me over time. So when I was really little, um, I only define family as the people I would come home to every single night and the people with whom I felt supported. So that was my mom, my dad, and my older sister. I'm the youngest child of my mom and my dad. I only have one older sister. But then my notion of family grew 
when I went into middle school and I started taking biology classes where I learned about genetics and about evolution. And I really saw family as another human being with whom I had a connection through blood and genetic material. So that really broadened my sense to understanding that there were grandparents of mine, there were cousins and uncles and aunts. And also as I uh, had the opportunity to meet and connect with them more and more, I realized that family is a much broader notion than simply my parents and my sister. And then as I grew emotionally um, through high school and college, when I was learning these topics and learning about, say, psychology and things like that, I really associated family with any individual that didn't necessarily have to be blood related to me, but with whom I felt a really strong amount of trust that I could share with them something of very personal nature without feeling ridiculed or reprimanded for it. So there were some very close mentors of mine in high school and college who I would even consider to be family. There were some very dear friends of mine in high school and in college that I would also consider family. And ever since then, and ever since I've been doing my own spiritual growth and cultivating my own inner peace through individual exploration and learning, I've really broadened the idea of family to really any entity in the world in which I can naturally and without perceiving any resistance really express any form of love. And so in that sense, my notion of family has really grown from when I was little to when I am right now. And I think that really highlights how family is an extremely flexible notion, which means a lot of things to a lot of different people. Thank you so much for sharing your thoughts on, on what family means to you. And uh, particularly, you know, I, I read also a, a study which was made globally, which exactly also expressed how the concept of family shifted, where in, in, uh, in a nutshell, uh, we can say family is, uh, is where I feel loved and, and uh, where I feel accepted and where I feel home, you know, also internally, uh, you can say spiritually home. And this is exactly what you, what you also have expressed. So thank you, thank you so much on, on that. So my second question is, and uh, I'm asking you now, uh, Narayan, to continue. What do you personally cherish in your, in your family uh, living? Uh, so what, what do you like, what do you love, you know, the most as being a member of, of your family let me say of your closer biological family, but also as you mentioned, as family, you know, uh, in a more broader sense, even a, even a spiritual sense of, of the meaning. Uh, what can you share some examples and some, some experiences on that? Okay, um, so this is, there's a lot of things that I could talk about, but I just want to highlight some important things that I associate daily. So I love that there is a sense of consistency and connection with one's day. So a typical family ritual of ours is in the mornings, um, anytime, say, between 6 a.m., all the up to say nine or 10 a.m., depending on the day, we'll come together, we'll have coffee or tea and some type of breakfast food together and we'll connect with one another on how we're doing as well as any important events that may occur in that day or that week. And we'll really have a chance to share with one another and connect in that capacity. And then in the afternoon, at tea time, we call it tea time, um, I'll usually make tea for the family and then we'll go ahead and again connect and see how we were doing uh, during the first part of the day and what we're looking for forward to later on in the day. So those are some consistent aspects of daily habits that I and rituals that I love about being in my family. Now more abstractly, as someone who's a younger brother, I love that there's the opportunity for me to learn from an older sister and two parents. Um, and the fact that we're all in the healthcare profession, there's the ability to get different perspectives on uh, professional life. I love that there's the time that we have an understanding that there is a special days for individuals, like for example, there's birthdays or there's special accomplishments, like say if my parents get promoted in work or if my sister does really well in school or if I do really well in school, there's a place in which we can share that as a collective and have those spaces where we really recognize what has happened. 
I also love that there's the opportunity that even in very difficult times or very joyous times, there's always a mindset of wanting to improve and have the best interest of sharing something that's going to grow an individual, even if it's, for example, constructive criticism, or if it's like a pray, like form of praise or giving like a form of affection, like a hug. I also love that there's a sense of trust that my parents give me enough responsibility growing up to say, for example, do dishes and help with the dishwasher when I was like still in elementary school, all the way to, for example, making food. Now, um, as someone in my mid twenties, there's always been that element of trust and that interest in making me part of a family and everyone has their role that they can connect with. And lastly, I love that there's an element of dependability with respect to my family doing things for me, but also having the expectation for me do things for them. So for example, when I was in elementary school all the way up to high school, I couldn't drive, but my parents would always take the time to drop me off to um, summer school whenever, or summer um, break um, camps when we didn't necessarily have the ability to stay at home alone, or also to pick us up from math club practice or after school activities. But at the same time, whenever they were sick, they would expect us to go ahead and say, take them to the hospital or drive them to the airport or go ahead and make food for them. So there was a mutual sense of care and connection in the way that we did things. So in a sense, I love abstract and concrete things that happen routinely as well as in certain phases of life with respect to my family. Thank you so much for, for sharing uh, your, some examples and uh, your experiences of, of deep connection, you know, with your, with your family. And uh, you, Angelina, what uh, do you personally cherish, you know, uh, within being within your family, uh, if you want to give some, some example? Yeah, thank you, Nuriyan. Thank you, Patrick. So, as I have already mentioned, my family means much to me, and it is uh, a real example of an ideal family. So, I'm very proud of my parents, as next year they are going to celebrate their 30th universe anniversary of their marriage. Uh, so, they married when my mom was 18 and my father was 20, so they were re really very young. Uh, and for me, it's a wonderful example of support and trust in my family and in the other, in the other families. My mother and father always do everything together. Uh, they try to bring us, uh, to bring up us, uh, their children, uh, in the atmosphere of friendship and happiness. Uh, I'm very proud that my family is really big because we have three children in our family. I'm the eldest one. I have a younger brother and a younger sister. My brother is uh, 11 years old and he goes to school. So his name is uh, German. And my sister is um, uh, two years old and she uh, enjoys spending time with us. Uh, her name is Eva. Uh, so, uh, I think that uh, my parents try to do their best to make us uh, the happiest and the smartest people as uh, they cherish all our uh, activities, all uh, our hobbies and everything we would like to do. Uh, so, they try to help us to do everything in the better way. Uh, besides, my grandmother, my mom's mom, uh, always helps my parents with the children. Uh, she also makes a great contribution um, in our upbringing. And for example, as I have already mentioned, my family moves uh, mo have moved uh, to Moscow and my grandmother has also moved to Moscow with us. So she is uh, 72 years old, but she tries to be very modern and she tries to do their best to make a great contribution in our upbringing. So I'm very proud of my family because uh, it is one of the best example of how people should connect uh, with each other in the family because we always try to do our best to help each other and to do different things if we need some help uh, from each other so i think it's uh, one of the best examples so and as i have already mentioned uh, i got married in august and i think that uh, it's just because of my family example mm. thank you so much for for sharing uh, this beautiful example of a, of a happy family yeah. And, and, and how, how do you feel being like the, the, the elder sibling, like the, the big, big sister, you know, towards your, your brother and your, and your little sister? How, is, how does it feel being in that role for you? Uh, unfortunately, I can't uh, understand how to be the, not, not the eldest one, because <laughs> I'm the eldest one. So I really enjoy uh, being um, maybe um, more, um, or just wiser than my, my uh, other 
uh, brother and sister because I can uh, teach them everything I know. For example, I can do some uh, home exercises with my brother or I can um, uh, teach my sister some words or so on because I would like to be a friend for them because I know, I think, uh, I know more than they know now so I can help them to uh, not to make some mistakes that I've made maybe just when I was a, was a child. So I think it's one of the best things to be a part of the family, especially when you have uh, other brothers and sisters. Thank you very much, Angelina. If I may add to something please, that Angelina mentioned, um, I appreciate that you mentioned that you as an eldest um, sister with two younger siblings, you're able to go ahead and share um, like your expertise and your knowledge to them. Uh, my sister had played a lot of that same role when I was much younger. So for example, she um, got to learn about things like history and art. And she would share with me a lot of times when she was done with her classes, she would say, here are some of the old, like, old books that I did. Why don't you go ahead and read them? And I was curious, so I got to learn about those. And then she also, uh, we would engage in discussions about literature and things like that. So in a similar way to what you're describing, my older sister has been a really good role model to me on not only academics, but also say emotional development. So I appreciate that you mentioned that um, in this context, Angelina. Uh, thank you very much, Narayan. I hope that I am and I will be a model or a kind of an example for my brother and sister and they will uh, be very happy that I'm the eldest one. Thank you. Thank you for sharing uh, your, your ideas and your wisdom on that, of uh, you know, being an elder sister or younger brother within, within your, your family. The third uh, question is like, uh, you know, festivities and celebrations and special events bring, bring family together. So uh, I'm, uh, I'm asking to you, um, Narayan, today, you know, is Diwali, you know, and uh, in about a month from now, it's Thanksgiving Day. And uh, it's commemorated in, in the United States. And, and uh, Diwali is, is celebrated, you know, in, in many uh, countries where you have the Hindu faith, like in India or Nepal, or I can even say um, uh, island in the, in the Southern Pacific, you know, like Fiji Islands, where you have a great uh, population of, uh, of Hindu, Hindu people. So being uh, of uh, Hindu faith, Nayan, how do you celebrate uh, Diwali, you know, today or even during these past days which which have already begun and how you celebrate it with your with your family and afterwards and what about uh, thanksgiving which is about one month ago which is one of the big celebration and family reunion in the united states of america please yes so thank you for your question patrick um so one thing to note to our viewers although i live in the usa um i am indian by birth and i've like have substantial family in India. And although I visited them for a number of different occasions, I don't always get that opportunity. So um, as someone who's both of Indian and Indian, Indian descent living in the US, I celebrate both Diwali, which is a major holiday, especially celebrated by, uh, celebrated by Hindus, but also by a number of Jain, Sikhs and Buddhists, as well as others, as well as Thanksgiving, which as Patrick noted, it comes up in around a month from now, actually in the US. So in terms of that, even though I cannot directly connect to my extended family, we make ample use of WhatsApp and email and phone to always speak on those days and wish happy wishes, say how everyone is doing. But in person, what happens in Diwali is we do some types of prayers or festivities. So Diwali is really a five-day holiday. Um, it began two days ago. Today is um, called Lakshmi Pujan, as uh, my family understands it. And this is the day which most people consider to be the typical understanding of Diwali, where people will pray to goddess Lakshmi, who's the goddess of beauty and the goddess of wealth, as well as there will be a lot of prayers, there will be celebrations in the forms of fireworks and in the local Hindu temple. There will be a cultural program where people in the community will share cultural dance, singing, and then other skits and drama pieces. So 
one thing that my family will do is we'll go to such events and connect with the, com the local community who's not necessarily our family. On each of the five days of Diwali, we'll spend some time in the evening doing a prayer. We'll make a special plate of special Diwali sweets, which we'll go ahead and compile and then I'll break them up into four and then we'll all share them. And moreover, we'll take some time to reflect on how the year was good and then best steps that we can take later on in the next year. In Thanksgiving, what's valuable is that in the US we get off days from school. So with that day off, sometimes, and in many US restaurants and in stores, they will sell specific items for Thanksgiving meals or they'll have specific restaurants that have Thanksgiving meals. So we will often go to one of those restaurants to have a special meal that's commemorated on this day, or we'll go to a store and then bring some type of food and cook together and then have a meal together. But we'll also take the time to talk about what it means to be thankful and what we're thankful about on the year before, the day of, and also what we hope to be thankful of on the subsequent days. And so with Diwali and Thanksgiving, these are really important days which we celebrate as a whole. But in extension, my family really takes time to celebrate any day of major social significance. So that oftentimes comes in the form of weddings or as a Hindu, there's something called the Upanayana or the sacred threat ceremony, which uh, many individuals, but especially Brahmins, Brahmin boys, they go through a ceremony when they're very young, which introduces them to life in the intellectual growth and in their next steps of, in tradition, this was learning the Vedas and learning the scriptures, but it's really a doorway into formal education. So in addition to Diwali and Thanksgiving, there are those major ceremonial occasions in which we'll often go to India or there will be a lot of family members that come together and gather for these special occasions to celebrate them because they are of major significance and thankfulness to everyone. Thank you so much for, for sharing, um, you know, uh, all the, the details, you know, of how you and your family are celebrating uh, festivities based on your cultural backgrounds, but also where, where you are living here in the United States of, of America. And Angelina, um, how do you and, and your family commemorate uh, festivities in, in, uh, in the Russian Federation? I'm thinking of like uh, Christian uh, Orthodox festivities uh, of, like uh, of Christmas and um, and Easter and maybe other festivities, particularly which take are taking place in in the Russian Federation. Can you share with us how you and your family are celebrating those special days of these family reunions? Yeah, thank you very much, Patrick. So surely different families have different events and occasions that bring them together. And so my family, our common hobby is traveling and we enjoy visiting foreign countries together. Uh, my parents never go somewhere on holidays without us, their children. So we have been to many different countries such as Germany, Switzerland, uh, Italy, France, Bulgaria, Turkey, Egypt, Mallorca, Greece, UK, the US, Japan and so on. Uh, we enjoy uh, not only sunbathing and swimming, but also visiting different sites, going to different museums and taking photos of the places we are visiting. Uh, we have also a great collection of magnets from different states, so I really appreciate our hobby. As for our cultural and religious traditions, I can't say that we are very orthodox, uh, but we believe in God and try to observe Russian traditions. Uh, as regards the most famous ones, we usually go to church before Christmas uh, and exchange presents on the Christmas Eve. In Russia, we celebrate New Year's Day before Christmas, you know, uh, as our Ostox Christmas is on the 7th of January. And very often we go somewhere with our family friends to spend this vacation uh, together because uh, in Russia we have holidays, winter holidays during the, this period uh, from the 20, uh, 31st of uh, December till maybe just uh, the 9th of January. And we, would, we enjoy spending these vacations together. Uh, as for Easter, we usually, uh, we have also some traditions. Uh, we usually dye eggs in onion peels and make a special dish called kulich. It's a special Russian dish, uh, which is made from flour, eggs, sugar, and uh, raisins. And one day before Easter, we go to church to hallow or sanctify eggs and kulich. And on Easter morning, we have a family meal where everybody say, uh, says uh, thanks to God. And I enjoy these Russian traditions a lot because I think that um, it's a very good uh, occasion, a very good uh, uh, 
a very good to uh, yeah a very good occasion to spend time together and to follow our traditions and besides we have some other days that are very important for us for russian people for example the victory day uh, because uh, this is a holiday in Russia and uh, all people all over the country, uh, from children till the elderly people, uh, go uh, somewhere to the parades in different uh, cities. For example, in Moscow, there is a big parade uh, where uh, people uh, can see some veterans uh, that, uh, who uh, took part in the uh, Second World War. And we really appreciate uh, their... Um, uh, their contribution to our lives. So that's why I think that is one of the main holidays in Russia too. And we, in our family, also try to do our best to take part in the parades and to uh, be very um, proud of our, of our family members who took part in the Second World War. Thank you very much, uh, Jelina and Marianne, for sharing your, your moving, inspiring uh, family you know, story of uh, reunion and of activities during particularly festivities within your, your country. And uh, now I'm going to ask uh, the following question or address the following issue. You know, a, a family is often considered as a cocoon space, you know, a space of love and uh, where you feel at home. But the family is also a social union where, where conflict occurs because very often, you know, we are very close to each other and we need some, some space and sometimes there are some frictions and some conflicts, but even smaller or bigger. So, uh, Narayan, what, uh, how do you manage conflict, you know, within, within your family, within your, your siblings, for instance, or, or I don't know, with sometimes with your, your parents or other members of the family? How do you manage that uh, from, from your end? So as I understand conflict management, it occurs in both a spontaneous way in some cases, as well as in the context of routine discussion. So in the spontaneous context, there are some times when we're inevitably going somewhere and then a conflict arises and then it gets addressed immediately. As one example, um, one time my family was driving to, well, I was driving the rest of my family to a restaurant where we wanted to eat dinner. And then there happened to be a TV show that all of us liked that night before. And we were talking about what we thought about it. And two of my family members ended up having a disagreement on what one of the judges said about one of the contestants in that TV show. And so that became very, they started arguing and it almost got to the point where they were yelling at each other about, in disagreement. But then the third family member said, hey, um, I know that we all love this TV show, but we're all going ahead and having some time to eat a great meal. Let's go ahead and focus on that great meal. And so both of them, they realized all of a sudden, okay, well, we've been going ahead and talking about this thing. That's not as consequential. Let's apologize um, to one another and then let's continue on. So both of the, the family members apologized. And then we started talking about the dishes at that restaurant that we really liked and we wanted to go ahead and potentially choose because this is a restaurant that we've been to a number of times in one of our favorite restaurants. So that's what it can look like in a spontaneous setting. Now in routine settings, there it's a little bit more structured. So as I noted earlier, my family has a ritual of drinking coffee or tea in the morning and then later on in the evening. And I'll, on one of those occasions, if there's a big family decision that needs to be made, we'll bring up the point of conversation Everyone will share their honest feelings and perspectives on what it is, and then there will be a consensus decision made at the end that takes into account everyone's different perspectives. So there was one time when in our house, we were planning to do some renovations, and there was a lot of different opinions on what to do in the living room of our family home. So specifically the furniture and the way to handle a specific mirror in that home. So everyone took turns to go ahead and say how they felt about the choice of furniture color, the, the type of furniture and the placement of that mirror. And after everyone did that, um, my dad as the head of our family, he said, let's go ahead and think about all the different things that we said. Here are some common points that are here. Here's a consensus decision on what we can make. And then 
he checked with everyone, is this okay with everyone? And then in that case, everything was okay. And then we had um, a decision that was made on what we could do. So in that sense, there is a structured approach that we took to making a decision where there was a clear path. So I think that in managing conflicts, there's a systematic aspect of managing conflicts in set routines that we have, as well as a spontaneous ability to manage those if they so happen. But I think that's really a function of the fact that we love each other and we trust each other and we want the best for whatever the situation is. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. And uh, Angelina, uh, so how uh, do you manage conflict or even resolve conflict, you know, within, within your family when they're arising, when they occur? Okay, thank you very much, Patrick. Thank you very much, Narayan. So I fully agree with Narayan because he just um, uh, explained uh, to us uh, the main points of the conflicts in the family because certainly there are conflicts in every family. And for example, as for my family, we are not an exclusion. Uh, however, we try to solve our problems in a very short time. Uh, for example, if we have uh, some disagreements, we always discuss what we do not support in the opposite opinion. Uh, and try to find a compromise and we, sh we try to do in a very short time because we don't want to be angry with each other for a long time and just uh, we want to forget something and just to solve the problem uh, when it arises. And so we also try to explain to each other the point at which one of us is wrong. Uh, besides, we never shout at each other and try to explain everything in a calm voice because I think that when people shout, uh, they do not understand each other. They just uh, uh, listen to the shouting of another person and uh, do not concentrate on the words uh, he or she is uh, saying. So that's why we try to solve our problems in a calm voice because when we are calm, we are concentrate and we can discuss the problems and the real points of view. So I really uh, think that it is one of the best uh, points to solve uh, the problem. And I agree with Narayan, as I have already mentioned, because uh, we can have spontaneous uh, problems and spontaneous conflicts, and we have, for example, sometimes routineous ones. But I think that uh, all problems can be solved because the family is uh, the unique organism and it is uh, formed by people who would like to be together and who would uh, support each other and so on. So I think that conflicts are just uh, kind of uh, an adventure for people who live together. And if they uh, come across this, uh, they will survive and will live a happy life. One thing that I think Angelina mentioned, which I think was really poignant, was conflicts are an adventure. So I think that um, depending on the social unit and depending on the individual stakeholders in that unit and what's there, um, and I'm not just talking about family, but in any social unit, there can be people with a bunch of different interests. And within that context, there can be different understandings of what a conflict is supposed to be and how the, each of them understand conflict. So some individuals may understand conflict as a divisive time to be afraid of. And that brings in a mindset of fear, which can either cause destructive harm or it can go ahead and lead to a much prolonged discussion that leads to a resolution that's either suboptimal if quick or it's optimal, but takes a lot of time. However, if one phrases it in a positive way, like as, as Angelina mentioned, an adventure, or as an opportunity to grow, or with some type of positive aim, that can go ahead and really expedite it time-wise, or if there is not really the time element being important, there can be a very positive aim that's there. And I think sometimes that's the function of the type of setting that one is in. Um, I think that especially given in many families, there's an element of closeness and an element of trust. There tends to be a lot more of a time when people feel like there is something positive or an adventure, as An Angelina mentioned, that individuals can really go for what's best for not only themselves, but also for the entire unit. And then expeditiously solve things in situations as well as over time in a way that promotes growth. So I uh, appreciate the aspect of mentioning an adventure. Uh, I think that's great. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ayan and Angelina, for sharing your thoughts um, on that. Indeed, you know, um, 
conflict are adventure and, and should be addressed and, and not oppressed, you know, because uh, when you oppress them, you know, then they are growing. And the way you put the, your focus on, you know, there's a chance of being uh, resolved, addressed, and the uh, solutions are already within, within the conflict. So you need only to identify them and to resolve it together, you know, in a very courageous, courageous way. So, uh, you know, if there's a conflict, you know, go for it and, and resolve it together. Thank you for, for sharing. Um, I believe that how we value our family life and how we manage conflict within our family has a strong impact on the state of the world. So either for the good or for the bad for humanity as a whole, the, the family is a, is a nucleus, you know, of, of, of global society, is a, is a global society as a, in a small, in a very small nucleus version. And the way how we, we say, live our family life and uh, is also uh, has an impact, you know, on, on, the, on the, how the global family is moving towards conflicts or catastrophes even, or towards uh, world peace and harmony. So each one of us is a, is a member of a global family, you know, on earth, we call it even global family, you know, humanity as a whole. And I'm asking you what message of empowerment and encouragement would you like to convey to your global family, so to humanity, to your global family, or to also to your global family of, of viewers? Angelina, what the message do you want to, to address or, or convey to the viewers, to your global family? Yeah, thank you very much, Patrick. So we people of Earth uh, should understand our goal in the world. Uh, every person is a unique creature and therefore their interests and values are not the same. However, we should find a compromise to live in a peaceful world. Uh, one of the main problems today is ecology. Uh, there are a lot of negative changes in natural habits of animals and birds, uh, which cause problems in flora and fauna all over the world. And I'm sure that we people should uh, help our brothers, animals and birds, uh, and make our place of living suitable for life. Uh, besides, uh, wars are a real problem all over the world. Uh, different nations fight with each other to become the superior one. However, a war is not a solution of the problem. Uh, on the contrary, it's a real disaster for the peoples. Uh, nowadays, there are a lot of organizations uh, which uh, try to prevent peace on Earth. Uh, one of them, for example, is the United Nations. And in 2016, I took part in the UN conference, which was devoted uh, to the uh, theme to the problem of volunteering. And uh, I've made a lot of friends there. It was held in the, the, in the headquarters uh, of the UN in Geneva, in Switzerland. And I really enjoyed uh, this conference because I made a lot of friends there uh, with whom I still stay in touch. And I'm absolutely sure that we, uh, young people all of, of all over the world, uh, should take part in such events, uh, as only we can make our life uh, and the life of our future generations uh, better without conflicts and wars. In my essay in 2010, um, I wrote that we had to prevent peace on Earth, and I'm sure that it is uh, still relevant nowadays. And we should find the best solution to all problems uh, and support each other and our states and nations uh, in the disastrous situations that can take place anywhere in the world. And so I think that we should start from our family, from ourselves, and we should be honest uh, for first uh, with ourselves. And then uh, we will make our world peaceful and we will live a really very happy life. Thank you so much for your encouraging and empowering message to, to all of us and to the, to the global family. And Narayan, what uh, message do you like to convey to your global family? So when I think about human beings, I really think that human beings and by extension, the entire earth is a type of family. And let me sit, explain what I mean by that. A lot of times when individuals think of the meaning of family, they associate physical closeness relative to some bigger thing. So a lot of times um, families are the few people that one are close to or who live in one very small house within a bigger world. Well, and also individuals with whom one shares a lot of physical commonalities as well as social commonalities. And so may I suggest the following. In the same way that you or any individual may be immediately close to their families, 
um, as in their biological families. The earth is a very small part of a gigantic universe or set of multiverses. So any individual or any organism on earth, not just humans, is part of a small family, a global family of sorts within the context of the entire universe. That's the first thing. The second thing that I would encourage everyone to think about is consider, for example, what science tells us. When I was in biology class and I started learning about genetics, it was amazing to see that there is incredible similarity between various different humans. Although, as Angelina mentioned, there are amazing unique differences between humans and between in, um, individuals and there's special things about each in individual, there is remarkable similarity there. I believe I've read that there is over a 99% genetic similarity between human beings. Um, I've read as little as 99%, as good as like, or as high as 99.99%. There is extremely high genetic similarity in the physical structure on the genetic code that connects human beings. So there is a commonality that really comes within each one of us. So I would encourage you all to really think about that um, as you interact with human beings, as well as interact with our earth. There's a reason why we call it the mother earth, for example, in the same way that there is a home that we share with our mother, the uh, mother earth is a very small home in the context of the greater universe. Also, I would encourage you to, um, if there is something that you feel that is authentic to you, um, even if you feel scary or scared or uncomfortable about it, and if you believe that it's going to be of great value to the surrounding um, world and universe, please go ahead and share it. I know I felt that way when I was writing my essay um, for the International Essay Contest for Young People in 2015, is I never shared my own story in such a public fashion. Um, and I never entered an essay contest before, but I really thought that something that I reflected on could be of value to, at the very least, the people who were reading it. And I was pleasantly surprised that I had won it. And then when I shared my story, there were people in my college who said, thank you so much for sharing your story and taking the courage to do that, because that really empowered me to go ahead and live in my best self. And lastly, um, I would encourage you to think about the resources that are available to you today, wherever you are, and to use those to the best capability. In there, wherever in a human being is, there is still a glorious earth that one can touch their feet upon. There are beautiful grasses. There is a, a beautiful sky that one can see with clouds. And so understand that whatever human being there is, they still see those things. So there is a sense of connection and I encourage you to go ahead and connect with that knowing that other human beings in your global family have that. If you have access to technology, I encourage that you use technology to learn about your family, whether through, for example, online articles and sources like Wikipedia or through the news or through like WhatsApp or to go ahead and connect face-to-face -face with people in WhatsApp or other such technologies, or as Angelina had talked about, find the way to travel to connect with people as individuals in shared spaces. Because we do live in a world that is consistently evolving in consciousness at a um, abstract level, as well as in a world that's evolving and the tangible technologies that we have. So use those possibilities to foster that connection because as humanity grows more and more conscious, there will be those opportunities as well as those obligations to con consistently be at your highest selves. So please, I encourage and implore you and empower you to be at your authentic best and to use those to consistently push the frontiers of consciousness higher and higher for overall global familial benefit and universal benefit. Thank you so much. Yanayan and Angelina for having shared your thoughts, your experience and your insight on this family concept today. Our next uh, webinar will be in December. Details will be announced on the Goypi Foundation website and on the Facebook page. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you will join us again next time. And now comes the time to say goodbye to our two 
um, panelists today and speakers, Angelina and uh, Narayan. So thank you very much, dear Angelina, for having shared your, your experiences, your thoughts, your wisdom. Thank you very much, Patrick. Thank you very much, Narayan. Thanks a lot for everyone who will watch our webinar. I think that maybe one day we will meet and I will uh, see all, all of you, people of Earth, and everything will be okay. So thank you very much. It was a fruitful time and it was a pleasure to talk with you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. It was our pleasure. Das Vidanie. Das Vidanie. Vidanie. And also, thank you so much, dear Narayan, for sharing your your wisdom and your experience and your, your insight on uh, your family concept and about uh, how you celebrate your family. And uh, Thank you, Patrick. Uh, thank you, Angelina. And thank you to um, the viewers and the global family. I uh, really appreciate it and value this time of discussion. I hope that you all learn something valuable from this as well. Um, I encourage you to read the essays of uh, that were published by the Goy Peace Foundation of the past winners, as well as to listen to the other webinars that are in the series, because they will similarly um, touch upon ideas that we've touched upon today, as well as show you other ways in which you can be part of a great global family. I look forward to um, the chance to connect with you in person, and I wish you all a great rest of your day. Thank you so much. So, dear viewers, uh, thank you so much for having joined today and uh, for having uh, listened to the inspirational comments and uh, experiences uh, of uh, Angelina and uh, Narayan. I hope uh, you get inspired by their, by their wisdom, particularly also uh, if you take their recommendation and empowering words we just heard a few minutes ago, if you take them to your heart and uh, you know be aware that uh, we are a whole global family uh, all uh, moving towards oneness and uh, and harmony and uh, let us all work together in visioning a world of peace and harmony within the global family so thank you so much and i'm looking forward to seeing you soon in our next webinar have a wonderful time and day